pray for you already in the name of Jesus Christ may the grace that lifts may the grace that announces let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now you are welcome to believers global TV beloved in Christ I implore you not to miss this important message you are about to listen to it is not by accident that you are here on this channel right now I strongly believe that there is something God is about to do in your life through this teaching and that is why I encourage you to listen to the end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Today is a day of divine favor and testimony. Stay to the end. Don't go away. God bless you. Did you read about Jesus? The Bible said in Matthew chapter 4, after he was baptized, verse 1, it said the spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. What does that mean? That season of his life was the season of temptation. But Jesus had intelligence. Before the devil came, Jesus used priesthood. He entered prayer and fasting and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The devil now tempted him. The moment the temptation was over, the Bible said he returned. Two things happened in the power of the spirit. It was not written anywhere that this is time for his manifestation. But he understood something about season. There is a season God has allocated for me to manifest. I know what to do to route that season into now. I must not wait until that time comes. I can use prayer to bring that time close. So I can either walk into the season or I can bring the season to me. And in Matthew chapter 4 verse 15, the Bible said, his fame went abroad. A man who was supposed to be tempted. It was supposed to be a time of weeping. Oh God, where are you? Oh God, what should I do? Not Jesus. He knew what to do. This season cannot only be the season of temptation. If I inject prayer, if I inject fasting, I can bring power into this season. If I inject prayer, if I inject fasting, I can bring influence into this season. And the moment he did that, he did not just pass the temptation. He entered the synagogue and the, the Bible said, demons began to cry. Why have you come before your time? That means that was not the time. But the man knew something to do on the altar. And he changed it. Listen, some of you sitting here, there are certain blessings allocated to your 40 years. So you have to enter your 40 years before you do it. But if you wait for 40 years, too many people will die in your family. If you wait for 40 years, there will be too many illiterates in your family. You are just 25. 40 years is 15 years from now. How can you wait for 40 years? So what do you do? You are sent to the timeless dimension. And so as you enter your altar, as you are praying, the speed is not enough. You add fasting. Zigzo, brakida. After 21 days, you add another one. You add another one. You will discover that something that should happen when you are 40, you will start seeing visions and dreams of those things while you are 25. As you are now entering 26, God will send somebody, send things, and those things will begin to happen and you will do it until you are 40. That's how we change things in this realm. There was a season of my life when the Holy Ghost inspired me. Every month, I fasted for 21 days. Praying, praying and fasting. I will rest for nine days. I enter another 21. I will rest for nine days. Enter another 21. On the sixth month, the Prince of Makodi appeared to me. I saw a being came out of the wall, naked. When I looked at the head of the naked woman, the head was a man. I now understood that one of the forces that keep people from Benue in captivity is the force of perversion. And the being came, sat on my chest. I struggled, I was paralyzed. And God helped me. A scripture came to my spirit. They that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. I said, Jesus, save me. Light came and dematerialized that being. Few months later, I became a global voice. Only God know. Do you know something? A woman had told me before that five years from now, the nations will hear me. And she was correct. But priesthood had to change the season. Because if I wait for that five years, too many people will die. Too many people will not be married. Too many people will not go to school. And so, like Jesus, through priesthood, I occasioned the lines to fall for me in pleasant places. I occasioned it. So what discernment of season does is that it trains you on what you need to do in order to have the best of God. He said the sons of Isaac. First Chronicles 12.32 They had understanding of times 
and season. What did that do? And they knew what to do. So seasons come to educate you on what to do in order to have your intervention. It doesn't have to be in 20 years. It doesn't have to be in 30 years. When I read my Bible, I discovered that although God created the season, but he gave us the key. He said the heir, so long as he's a child, is not different from a servant. So the father places him under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. What is the Bible saying? The day that child understands spiritual intelligence, that is his time. So long as he's a child, even if the season the father said comes, he may not experience it. But if he learns and grows, he can determine his own season. He can determine his own time. And this is why for intervention to take place, we must know what to do with seasons. Sometimes prophecy will come to show you that there is a season of your life when you will be wealthy. Sometimes through discernment you will know that there is a season of your life where you will give to government. You will borrow to government. Meanwhile you need food now. You are dying of hunger. If I don't do anything now, that season may not come. So instead of me waiting and hoping for a season to come, I begin to change the lines in the spirit. As you pray, you see. As you see, you prophesy. As you prophesy, you pray more. You see more. You prophesy more. And before you know what is happening, you begin to change things in the spirit. God gave me a lot of strategy to occasion my manifestation. There was a time in my life God told me, any genuine minister you see, sow a seed. I didn't even know what it meant. Those who are with me know. I will see some people on the street. I will rush, kneel down, give a seed there. They will bless you and say, God, we help you. They will bless you and say, your generation will help you. What God was doing was that he was using their corporate priesthood to shape my destiny. But people don't know times and seasons. There are times where things are allocated for you. And if you know it, you will know what to do so that you don't miss it and so that you can also manipulate it for your own progress. This is how spiritual things work. Interventions are times and seasons sensitive. Either by discernment or priesthood, do something about that season and see how your life will change. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies, and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to, them, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone it is more of what you take out of those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better so i do hope and i pray that this message will transform your life will turn your life around